his official time will not count because he's 15, maybe 20 feet in front of the stop sign, stoplight. But that's his disadvantage. I believe this gives him less time to accelerate before hitting the hill. <laughs> so I don't know if it really counts as a head start. Keep it straight on that line, you'll be good. Hold on. Go slow. Just a leaky wheel seal here. And it's even a little bit wet in the back. So we're going to replace the wheel seal on here. Leveling valves and airbags, and we'll see if I get a bump stop and radius rod bushings. You can see where they've been moving around in there. It's clean and shiny. It's not even centered, as you can see right now, it's set offset. Tire extension was about ready to wear through. That's actually impressive that you noticed that. <laughs> Still got air in it. I'm placing the bump stop on here, and a uh, giant monkey wrench, pipe wrench thing really works the best. Gets it loose. So we're replacing the, the airbags with new ones here on Bose MCI-9. Uh, about half of the bolts came off with a ratchet. The other half came off with most of, well, uh, the other four, next 40% came off with the air chisel and then we're using a, a nut splitter on a couple where you really can't get the air chisel in there. But uh, the big chief, the chief air hammer does a really good job at knocking them off too. But I'll try the ratchet first because that's the easiest, the power ratchet. Once it gets them, then you just, but once they start spinning, you, it's a, you're done for it. So the air hammer does a real quick, easy work with them though. Rose struggling. <laughs> Crap falling in your ear? Yeah. Let's see how cracked this airbag was. And definitely needed to be replaced. You'll get it. Just keep prying that and go up. Uh, up with it, I think, is the angle it needs yep. to go.
So we ended up, the easiest thing to do was to remove these studs that were here and then it came off. As the studs were stopping us, we didn't have enough room to come back without hitting this, even up in the corner there. Um, it just made it easier. We removed that front stud there as well. Uh, should go back on a lot easier now. Um, just there wasn't enough clearance in there. So that may, sometimes I have these with their bolts and uh, now I see why, because it's so much easier to get it in and out with the bolts. So we'll get this other one back on with the new bushings in it and hopefully this shouldn't take too long. We're gonna remove his brake drums. Before they do that, uh, I wanna know what his parking brake adjustment was at. So we're right at about six inches from the faceplate to the clevis, and we'll see what it goes down to when we release it. Uh, hopefully it's more than four inches though. It's, we're gonna, if it's properly adjusted, we're about four and a quarter to four and a half is what we should see there. And if it comes down below, anything below four, it's way out of adjustment. Which they look like they're out really far, so we'll see. Uh, we did get that radius right on. We gotta put the plates on it and the locking uh, tabs that go over them. Uh, once we took out that top stud there that was kind of giving us a problem, we get the new one back on. It went right back on in less than five minutes. So that was definitely the key. And it only took, what, two minutes to remove the stud? Yeah. <laughs> uh, double nut technique works every time. When done properly. Yeah. <laughs> Versus the two and a half hours we spent trying to get fighting that thing fighting with it yeah it was it was it was quite a fight got an air leak one of these db3s is bad i like to hear that Might just be a hose in your parking brake circuit here. Uh huh. I know I've heard it in the past. I've never really identified where it was coming from. We just got the brake hose there, which is the brake hose on the parking brake circuit. Hopefully, we can just tighten it up. It looks like it's right at the fitting. It's the hose, it's not just the fitting. That's a fun one to get to, too. I almost missed the one bubbling on top there. I was <laughs> just the one bubbling there. You were parked too close to Art's bus for too long. Yeah. <laughs> Picked up some of his air leaks. Ching juice, leak detector, not booze, so we don't drink it. Yeah, if you want to go spray it in there, you can take a look, Tyler. Okay, so yeah, I told him he had a leaky wheel seal, and that his brakes will be better when he's done. <laughs> so not only were they not quite adjusted right, they were also well lubricated. <laughs> Looks like it was actually leaking under the seal there for the uh, seal retainer because it looks relatively dry all around here like not as gooey as it is and it's, it's really wet down here so I'm gonna guess that these are loose or they just use Permatex and not a gasket. See if they turn real easy for you because they look like they're loose to me. Oh gosh that's where the problem was. That's crazy. That one turned as soon as you stuck the screwdriver. I didn't even put any, they're all loose. Well, not all, we haven't tried them yet. <laughs> so far, they're all loose. That one was a little snug. <laughs> one out of six. <laughs> well, I was right about where it was leaking from. <laughs> I 
Okay, this is pretty gross. Pretty nasty. How many miles ago did you have this at the shop? What's that? How many miles ago did you have this at the shop for them to look at you and check your brakes? 3,000. 3,000 miles. I think this has been longer than 3,000 miles. See how misshapen they are. Get a sledge. Today to get some more tools. This will be mostly tools that my clients get to use and easy access stuff in the new box that we got from Harbor Freight too. And we're gonna listen to a podcast. What are we listening to? Time Suck on the Oregon Trail. Time Suck. <laughs> They're pretty good if you don't listen to them. The 301 piece tool set. I used to have that and traveled with it. And that was like my main toolbox for a long time. Uh, that's a nice flex head uh, icon ratchet that you got too. I've been waiting for that to be in stock for a while. I'm starting to get it all loaded up. Okay, so here's the new tool cart. Tyler went and bought a bunch of tools to load it up today. And this is going to be for our customers to be able to use too when they're here. So everything in here, they're welcome to use. As long as they... If they break it, they got to tell us we can get it because everything in here is lifetime warranty. And everything has a warranty. I made sure that everything was good. So if something just breaks, just let us know. I've got everything on organizers. So if something's missing, it'd be really easy to tell at the end of the job what's missing. But metric and SAE, quarter three eighths, half inch drive, bit sockets, inverted torques, adapters, uh, standard ratchets are there. We've got our long half inch flex over here. I'm kind of excited to try out the new Icon one. I've been waiting for this to be in stock forever. And then you got screwdrivers and yep, pry bars over there. Yeah, flat blade screwdrivers on that side, Phillips on this side. You got a pair of pry bars in the back corner. Oh, I left the drawer so much when I rolled it. Some pliers. Got a set of locking ones for filters. Wire strippers and crimpers. Long side cuts. Allen wrenches. Some precision screwdrivers. These are quarter inch drive 12 points. They actually come in that 301 piece set. I didn't have a spot to put them on that rail for right now so they're down here with the bit sockets pretty basic set of wrenches nothing fancy but it'll get what most people need to get done and finished a couple hammers this is a punch and chisel set a little scraper and i got some parts trays and the rest of the box is still open to grow it's a nice selection though. Everything that they need for the basic stuff. For most customers, they'll probably run out of ability to work on their own before they run out of what we can do out of this box. They'll probably need to come find us anyway. So where's the stand, the regular ratchets that come with this set? Over here. Okay. 
And then we have this half inch flex head. And then the 3 8 icon one that's there. Looks good. This will be very convenient for our customers to use, and that way they don't have to use our more expensive tools. Um, hopefully they won't lose anything, but they've been really good about it. Bill got that one off and put back together all by himself. He seems to put it back on now. Making good progress. Oh, it's getting all cleaned up good. Guys going back on, radius right cushions. So many of you know that we have a very unusual business model here where we let the clients work on their stuff. If they work alongside of us, they actually save $25 an hour off of our labor cost. So that's completely contrary to what most mechanics would ever let somebody do. Number one, they would never let somebody work along with them, but we're teaching them as they go. And if they want it, if they're willing to learn, we're going to give them a $25 an hour discount for doing that. Uh, even if they're not physically capable, uh, some of our people or clients are old elderly gentlemen and things like that, and they really can't do it, but they can help, you know, clean up parts and hand us tools and they're learning as they go. And then the other thing that we let them do is work on the vehicles themselves too. We have a minimum number of hours that we need to be able to build per day and they can work longer than that and doing, continue doing things on their own and we'll loan them the tools and our expertise and help them along the way when they need it. Uh, and that's just something that we have here. So Harbor Freight sent us that tool cart um, to review and so far I tell you what, that thing is nice. Uh, it's actually sitting next to the big snap-on box right there. Uh, quality wise, you know, if you were blindfolded, I don't know that you would know the difference between the two. Uh, it is, it feels very solid and durable. So we're going to continue to put it to work here and you'll see it in lots of videos coming up and we'll see how it holds up in the shop. And then, uh, Tyler is the one that bought all the tools to put in it. He paid for that full price out of his own pocket. Uh, and that's for people to be able to use here. So he's very excited about that too. But anyways, we'll have more, uh, videos upcoming on this project, uh, in the next couple of days. Tools. Check the air and all those duels. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Well, he's got a long, hard ride. In old Lenny, the silver sides. Get that bus grease monkey on the road. Well, he's got that hammer down and that 47 hound. It's that bus grease monkey on the road. He travels all around and he's coming to your town. Get that bus grease monkey down the road. up engine door watch that bus grease monkey do his thing 30 years behind that barn cause it don't run worth a darn watch that bus grease monkey make it sing he knows in detroit there's no doubt upside down and inside out it's that bus grease monkey don't you know saving buses far and wide in that old blue silver sides it's that bus grease monkey don't you know now he's moved his family to the hills of Tennessee. Watch that bus grease monkey make his home. Bringing buses back to life with the help of his dear wife. Watch that bus grease monkey get it done. Well, he travels town to town working on them old greyhounds. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Saving buses far and wide in old Lenny the Silver Sides. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know?